Hey guys, ever wanted to collect the data from your Facebook group members? How about those questions that everyone's answering when joining a group? Apparently, you really want to know according to the comments. So I'm here with a solution. Facebook actually keeps this under a tight lock and key. But today, I'm going to show you a simple trick to get all that valuable info into a neat Google spreadsheet. Let's dive in. But first of all, I wanna thank you for coming back and a big welcome to all the new subscribers joining us today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jake Dawson and I'm here to bring you the latest in AI sales automation and workflow hacks in a way that's easy to understand and apply. And as always, remember that everything that we cover here, it's designed to help you succeed. These are not just theories, but actionable strategies that you can use right now. Now, if you're new here or looking for more ways to level up, don't forget to check out the school community link below. Inside, you'll find exclusive make.com templates, including the one that we're using today, that you can import directly and start using immediately. We've built a whole space for learners and doers just like you, where you can ask questions, get direct help, and connect with like-minded folks ready to take action. And of course, you can always subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified of our bi-weekly videos, live sessions, and more. Let's jump in. So why scrape Facebook group member data? Imagine being able to see all the answers your members have given from emails to fun facts and organizing it all in one place. This is gold for group owners who want to engage better with their community. Today, I'll walk you through using a simple Chrome extension called Web Scraper. It's free, it's easy, and you'll have it up and running in no time. Let's get those data nuggets. First, let's talk about why Facebook makes this so tricky. If you've ever tried to export members' answers, you've probably realized Facebook doesn't want to make it easy. Their API doesn't give you access to this data, so the only way to do it is manually. But who wants to sit there copying and pasting for hours? That's where this method comes in. It's a one-time scrape that pulls everything from your group membership's questions into a neat little spreadsheet. Now, before we jump in, I'll also mention a paid tool in the description below that automates this process if you want to do it more frequently. But for now, let's get started with the free method. First, we need to install the Web Scraper extension. Open up Google and type in Web Scraper Chrome extension. You're looking for the one that says Web Scraper Free Web Scraping in the Chrome Web Store. Click on it, you'll see a blue button that says Add to Chrome. Click that, a little pop-up will ask, are you sure? Yes, we're sure. Click Add Extension. In a few seconds, it'll be installed, and you'll see a small puzzle piece icon at the top right corner of your browser. That's where all your extensions live. Now that we've got that web scraper installed, let's put it to work. First, head over to your Facebook group and go to the Members page. You'll find it under the People or Members tab. This is where Facebook lists all your group members, but instead of just staring at the list and wishing Facebook had an export button, we're going to make our own. Right-click anywhere on the page, literally anywhere, just not on a link or an image, or you'll get some weird options. From the menu that pops up, click Inspect. This opens up the Developers panel. Now, if this looks intimidating, don't worry. We're not hacking into the Pentagon, we're just borrowing some tools to make our lives easier. At the top of the developer panel, you'll see a bunch of tabs like Elements, Console, and Network. Scroll all the way to the right until you find Web Scraper. If you don't see it, click on the little double arrows to expand more options, and it'll be hiding in there. Click it, and boom, now we're in business. Next, we need to create a sitemap, which is just a fancy way of telling the scraper where to look and what to grab. Click the drop-down that says Create New Sitemap, then select Create Sitemap. A little box will pop up asking you to name it. Keep it simple. Just type Member Data in lowercase with no spaces. This will make it easier to find when we download it later. Now we need to tell Web Scraper where to start. Copy the URL from the top of your browser and paste it into the Start URL field. Just make sure it includes your group's name followed by slash members at the end. This way, the scraper knows exactly where to begin. All right, time to kick things off. Click the button that says create a sitemap and now we're officially rolling, but we're not done yet. Right now, Web Scraper is just sitting there waiting for instructions like an employee who doesn't know what their job is yet. Now that we've got our sitemap set up, we need to handle one of the most annoying things about scraping, Facebook scrolling. Facebook only loads a handful of members at a time. 
So if we don't tell Web Scraper to keep scrolling, it will only grab the first few people. Not what we want. So let's make sure it scrolls all the way down. Click Add New Selector, then name it Scroll. Set the type to Element Scroll Down. Now this part is important. When it asks what to scroll, you need to select the body of the page, not just a random section. Click on it and it should highlight the whole members list. If it's only highlighting a tiny part, try again until the entire members list area is selected. When that's done, hit Done Selecting and then Save Selector. But here's the thing, one scroll is usually not enough, especially if your group has thousands of members. If you only tell it to scroll once, it'll stop before it even gets through the first page. So we need to add another one. Click Add New Selector, again name it Scroll 2, and do the exact same thing. Set it to Element Scroll Down, select the Members list, then hit Done Selecting and Save Selector. This way the scraper will scroll multiple times to reveal more members. If you're dealing with a really large group, you might want to repeat this process a few more times. Just don't go overboard and set it to scroll forever or your computer might start questioning its life choices. Now that we've got the scrolling handled, let's start extracting some actual data. The first thing we need is the URLs of each member's profile. Why? Because these links will let us go deeper and pull more data later, like their answers to the group questions. Click Add New Selector again and name it Member URL. Set the type to Link since we're grabbing clickable profile links. Now hover over the first member's name in that list and click on it. You should see a red box appear around their name. That means Web Scraper knows to pull that link. To make sure it's working properly, click on one or two more names so it recognizes the pattern. If you only select one, sometimes it gets confused and misses some members. When all the names are highlighted in red, click Done Selecting. Next, there's a little checkbox that says multiple. Make sure you check that box. If you don't, Web Scraper will only grab one link instead of all of them, and that would make this whole setup pretty pointless. Once that's done, hit Save Selector. And now we've got our scraper set to pull every member's profile link. Now that we've got the member URL set up, we need to make sure Web Scraper actually processes all of them. By default, it'll grab the links, but we need to tell it, hey, don't just collect these URLs, go inside of each one and extract other details. Otherwise, we'll just end up with a list of profile links, which isn't super helpful on its own. To make this work, we need to do two things. First, click on the first member's profile from the members page, and second, configure the web scraper so that it visits each link one by one. So let's get started by clicking on the first member's profile. This helps Web Scraper recognize the structure of the page it will be scraping. Once the profile page loads, we're going to set it up so that Web Scraper automatically navigates through all of the profiles in the list and extracts the data that we need. Now go back to the Web Scraper panel, click on the selector labeled Member URL. Inside of that, we're going to add our next selectors. This tells the scraper to not just store the link, but also to open it and pull the information inside. That way it'll visit each profile, grab the details, and then move on to the next one automatically. Think of it like setting up a domino effect. Instead of manually clicking each member's name and copying details one by one, Web Scraper will go down the list, open each profile, and extract the information without you lifting a finger. All right, we're going to start with the basics, their name. Click Add New Selector, name it Member Name, and set the type to Text. Now hover over the member's name at the top of their profile. Once you see a red box highlighting it, click on it, then hit Done Selecting. Finally, save the selector. Next up, let's get the date they joined the group. This info is usually the, in the intro section of their profiles. Click Add New Selector again, name it Date Joined, and then set it to Text. Now go to the intro section. This is where Facebook shows things like when they join the group or other basic details. Select the part that mentions the join date, click done selecting and save it. Now comes the fun part, grabbing the answers to their membership questions. Facebook hides this inside a pop-up, so we need to tell Web Scraper to actually click on it before pulling the text. Click add new selector, name it click, and set the type to element click. Now go to the section where the answers to the membership questions appear and click on it. You should see a red box highlighting it. This means that Web Scraper now knows where to click. Once you've selected it, 
hit Done Selecting and save it. Once that's locked in, click Save Selector to make sure everything's stored. And now we need to add the actual selectors that will grab the answers. Click the button to open the pop-up again, and then go back to the web scraper and click on Add New Selector. Each membership question is a separate piece of data, so we need to create multiple selectors, one for each answer. If your group asks things like email addresses, professions, or reasons for joining, we want each of those answers to go into its own column. Let's start with an example. Say, your group asks, what is your profession? Click on Add New Selector, name it Profession, and set the type to Text. Now hover over the answer to highlight it, click it, click Done Selecting, and save that once more. That's one question done. If there are more membership questions, repeat the same process. Each answer needs its own selector so that it gets stored separately in a spreadsheet. Otherwise, everything might end up jumbled together in one column, and that's not going to be useful. Now that we've got all the selectors set up, it's time to actually run the scraper. Go back to Web Scraper, find the sitemap member data, and click on that dropdown. You'll see a button that says Scrape. Click that. A new tab will open, and Web Scraper will start working its way through the members list. Here's what's happening now. The scraper will scroll down to load more members, click on each one to visit their profile, press on the button to open their answers, extract the data, and move on to the next member. It's like an automated assistant going through the entire process for you. Now, one more thing to keep in mind. This is an instant. If your group has lots of members, this could take a while. The scraper has to manually visit each profile, wait for the page to load, click the buttons, and collect the data. So don't be surprised if, if this runs for a few hours even. If you're working with a really big group, you might want to start this process before you step away for a bit. Now that Web Scraper has done all the hard work, let's check out the results and get that data into Google Sheets so we can actually use it. First, head over to the Web Scraper panel and find the sitemap you created. It should be named something like Member Data. Click the dropdown and you'll see a Browse button. Click that, and this will open up all the data that the scraper collected. You should see a nice structured list of all the members, their URLs, their answers, and anything else that we set up. If it looks good, we're ready to move on. Next, we need to export this data so we can work with it. Click the sitemap dropdown again, but this time select export data. From the options, choose CSV. This format is perfect because it works well with Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, or basically any other spreadsheet tool out there. Once it's downloaded, you should see a file named something like memberdata.csv in your downloads folder. Now, let's get this into Google Drive so we, we can open it up in Google Sheets. Open Google Drive and let's keep things organized. Click the New button, then select Folder, name it something like Facebook Member Data so you don't lose track of this later. Now take the CSV file you just downloaded and drag it into this folder. Once it's uploaded, we're almost there. To actually view and work with this data, we need to open the file in Google Sheets. Right click on that CSV file, select Open With, and then choose Google Sheets. Google Sheets will automatically convert the file so everything is structured in columns, just like a proper database. Once it loads, you should see everything laid out neatly. Member URLs, names, join dates, emails, and answers to membership questions. Now, take a second to look through it. This is where you can really see the power of automation. Instead of manually copying and pasting answers from every single member's profile, you now have a full data set ready to be used however you need. You can sort it, filter it, or even use it to send personalized emails to new members. And that's it. You've just scraped all your Facebook group members' data like a pro. So get ready to use this system to keep track of your community's insights. It's simple, it's powerful, and now you've got it all set up. If you run into any issues or need more help, leave a comment below, I'll be happy to assist. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more easy to follow automation tips. And if you're serious about taking your automation game to the next level, check out our school community. It's linked below, and inside you'll find exclusive templates, resources, and a supportive group of like-minded people ready to help you succeed. Plus, the exact template that we use today is in there, so don't miss out on that. Oh, and before you click away, here's a video you'll probably want to watch next. It's packed with even more tips to help you crush it with automation. 
I'll see you there.